And we are back with another great match. This time it is um, Boris AI vs Sexy Sex Man. So in the tournament, this is the final, the, I mean the final final, the last matchup. Uh, why can't I watch both players now? The hell? Normally in replay you can see both. Crazy. Um, yes, so this is the final of the loser bracket. Um, Fitazoni, that is uh, Boris AI. Um, he lost versus Carl M in the finals of the winner bracket and now meets Lordus Fergenug or Sexy Sex Man. Um, and the map is two sides. I think this is a pick because this is not a default map here. So two sides, this map has a very long corridor in the middle and two team sides. Normally this is more like a two on two or three on three map, but in this tournament it was allowed as a pick in one on one since it's played very often over other maps that are not played very often. Uh, both players go with their scouts out here, so play quite well, just a normal scale up with fast factories into repair facility to get more construction vehicles out and this allows to scale economy up and the same I guess here yeah we already have a repair facility as well so nobody's going for this crazy air rush or something like this that works quite well on this map not has just one tank and one rifler, one minigun as defense. So if Boris decided to go over here, he m must adjust and get more stuff out, which can be a problem with not since the airstrips take their time until the airplanes come in and bring the reinforcements. But now we have some more infantry here. But often both players don't really care because they know it's not going to change much. It's just all about getting ready for the big fights. So let's speed this game up a little bit until it gets more interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay, here's the expansion to the blue tabarium field. I think GDI has already done that. Yeah. And I think we're gonna see similar earnings on both sides and similar army crafts. Bit more GDI, yes. That's no surprise here. And the not player is getting up more MCVs some scout units here oh and this army is getting bigger and bigger so the army crafts are scissoring separating more medium tanks battle tanks for GDI and not is just having a few infantry but now there's cyborgs so rushing is now no option now since even if the GDI decided to just go over with all that stuff and just pull in more units while they're going, pumping out these cyborgs is absolutely stopping such a rush. There's no way. The, he needs more advanced units to stop these cyborgs. MLRs are an option, quite good against infantry. Still, the cyborgs are pretty strong. So you can... He's now having a Venom to scout this crap and unsurprisingly GDI as his usual strategy is gets Warthogs and will try to bomb his economy. Not a bad idea, but he has scouted this with a Venom. Okay, and these infantry just go down to more Venoms. Probably he has also learned his lesson and got more Venoms when, the, um, when he had to take out Prism Tanks another matchup against allies this was a crucial part of not losing and being thrown out of the tournament the venoms have saved his ass already once and maybe he's learned from that and just got a few there's a lot of ssm launchers they oh did i hear some numbers where are they ah here okay he's bombing a base now but ah he very It was a sh 
a miss. He did not take out the Conyard, so it was in vain. Um, here we see some fight. GDI is going and gets some free shots on the Venoms. And these rockets not gonna do much against infantry, but for the tanks, very effective. Yeah, this is an uphill battle for GDI. Not has much high attack on their units. So in, on the, the high distance, this SSM launcher is going to take out everything. And on the short distance, the infantry is critical. But the Warthogs are the perfect answer for all of this stuff. Just incinerate the infantry and they will easily take out the SSM launchers. So the Venoms are not the best anti-air, especially not in this case. But as they are unopposed, they can do the job. Now we see some hover MLRS. Take the uh, very good addition to this to this entire air force. And here we see a heavy fight going on. GDI is trying to push through, and I think this is not going to work. The, the, the cyborgs just hold, having their miniguns fire at them. They're super effective. Oh, but these bombers, they might land a critical hit here. They took out all the SSM launchers and just a few, few losses. More medium tanks coming in, battle tanks. So, this fight was pretty even, I guess. Maybe a bit to advantage to the north side. And GDI is pulling in more units. Not already has some scorpion tanks, they shoot lasers, so the point defense lasers cannot do much against them. And here's more venoms coming in. I think he's just using the venoms to fend off some bombers. It's actually a good idea here. It would be even better if he had some spread out rocket launcher infantry because they deal a lot more damage. But this is a lot of micromanagement necessary. And he has the problem that all these not planes cannot land as fast as he's producing. But he has a, co a reinforcements coordinator for that already. So now the reinforcements are coming here via airdrop. Oh, that's... That's hard for the Warthogs. They did not deal much damage. And here's another fight going on. Oh, this match is intense. GDI has a lot of problems. The force is gone. He doesn't have much defense anymore, and if not knows that, he's gonna push through. And there's so much more stuff coming in. The army craft of GDI has dropped significantly. The earnings craft is similar for both. Um, the Pluto Berm field here is mined. And here it's still some left, so I guess he's relying more on these fields. That one is empty, but that's, it's the same for not, I guess. Yeah. So, but this push is hard to survive. With a lot of Warthogs, he can bomb. Yeah, that's the perfect angle he's coming in. Very nice. But there are already a lot of anti air buggies. The Railgun Titans are the correct answer to the Scorpion tanks. But unfortunately not against the SSM launchers. Oh, what a good what a good EMP. Now where are the Warthogs to just take out all that stuff? He's just not having enough army left. So he's not able to defend this here. And the point defense lasers, usually a good option, but the SSM launchers are really good at grinding them down. And this game gonna be end ending soon. Yeah, oh, now the anti air buggies even take out the Warthogs before they can launch their Napa bombs. This game is over for GDI. There is no way to come back here. The army is gone, there's still a heavy force pumping into the base. Now we're just seeing desperate measures. keep firing and firing even though the building is long long gone 
But GDI doesn't want to give up. Now he's scouting for the air units. And that is over. He does not have any reflector units. Which is not so good here since the laser scorpion tanks. Here was an airdrop from Nod. But all of that's not going to change the outcome of the game in any way. This is just... It's not possible to win for GDI anymore. It's time to give up here. Again, not giving up. Yeah, just pretend like you have a chance with this crap. So it was a good match, and it ends here. So let's just dive straight into the last match or in the second last. We'll see. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. This one. Let's go Battle for it. So I think this is the map pick of um, GDI player Boris or Federzoni. Because this is usually seen when he's playing, it should be his favorite map. Um, and of course this changed a lot in contrast to the last game. There's no small corridor here now, there's multiple attack angles. So taking out harvesters is easy here. Doing a rush with GDI infantry is also good. It's by far not as easy for not to get to the cyborg before the rush comes in so um, yeah but we see the scaling up here and here as well so both players have decided to scale up the economy and not go for some rush the scout buggy comes in get some pain and then still killed outside More airstrips. And the first MCV comes in. Here the MCV is already set up. And it's the third one is also going to expand. Did he set him far away? Yeah, he did. Interesting. This MCV is going up here close to the base as it looks like. So scaling internally in the first base is preferred for not. GDI is this time really expanding and not really going for an army like the earlier games. Not has some light tanks built. Un unusual, but I think he's expecting the same stuff he has seen very often from Federzoni. That there's going to be a push with a lot of infantry and a few MBTs. But then in the, for that case, he should get some flame tanks. He already has the com center. And the Venom before the scout comes. So he's just checking what's going on in this that. There go the flame tanks. Let's have a look. Um, oh, not is not spending their cash. That's a big mistake. GDI is just spending all of its cash perfect. But has less earnings, so this game might still be with equal army values. Yes, it's a tiny difference. Here come the bombers. Great, great unit against this not army. 
infantry easy take out no no defense against the bombers and he has decided to get stealth miners so he's expecting some harassment of his miners or he just doesn't feel like he needs the commander points for something else we will see ah he has also point defense lasers now on the flame tanks so the first ones are not with that upgrade but now they have point defense lasers so um for the ml rest this is absolutely devastating this army will be a big big problem for gdi if he manages to get his units in at the same time then the not army has a big advantage oh but here come the bombers very good very good play very nice he should have gotten the bigger block on the top but still good perfect landing by the warthog as well oh there comes significant force of MLRS that might be able then with this amount to get past the point defense lasers yeah and they break through missiles are making it the flame tanks do not really get to the infantry so it's not go looking too bad for GDI but now the squishy MLRS are all gonna die so this fight goes in advantage for the mod player <coughs> and this might amount to a loss of his expansion Is some flame tanks without PLD left orcas hmm. no chance against the cyborgs Flame tanks going crazy. And not is constantly pumping out new more units. The army craft looks good. The earnings are similar for both. So this looks like the game is more decided by countering the army. Yeah, he should get something else against this point defense laser. He needs he needs ray gunners, ray gun titans. He cannot just go on with MRS. It's a low t low tech unit. Point defense laser is not not something he can handle with MLRS. Yeah. So the not player is now splitting his bases and is going to take a jab at the harvesters. That's yeah, this is over for GDI. Heavy losses are coming in. Anti air buggies, yes. It's not even using the anti air buggies. This game is over for GDI. It's interesting to see how different this game plays out when there's a different force. So for the not player with flame tanks, the infantry is not a big deal. Whereas um, for screen, it always had some relevance until the ruiners came in. Same uh, against Soviets. Before artillery comes in, the GDI infantry is a re relevant force. For the allies, it depends. If, if you have prism cannons, then yes. Infantry is great against the normal prism tanks, not so much. So um, this means that um, the final finals of the loser bracket are decided, and there's only one matchup left, and that is the final final, where the winner of the loser bracket meets the winner of the winner bracket. And I'm happy to see these games as well and, re and cast them. Bye bye. Title control terminated.